Hey, everybody, it's Marnie Swedberg back with another Be Live interview with uh, featured speaker Carla Gasser of womenspeakers.com. Welcome to you, Carla. Hi, everybody. Hi, Marnie. Hi. It's great so to good be here. To have, yeah, it's good to have you here. And I'm excited because you have a new book that is just come out called The Way of the Wilderness. Yes. Um, and it's, it's really a great book. It's little, you can see it's a very short book. It's nine sections in it. You could do it in nine days or you could sit down and do it all at once or you could do it in a nine week study with a group, whatever, uh, whatever turns your crank. And what it's really fun is how to trust God to provide streams in the wasteland. And Carly, you've done an amazing job. I loved going through this book. You've done an amazing job in here, um, helping us to recognize that first of all, wilderness experiences are not necessarily punishment or, um, and not even necessarily something we can get out of quick by just turning a behavior around. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you about mm -hmm. this book and I wanna start us off in chapter three, which is kind of funny to start in the middle of the book, but. <laughs> who haven't read it yet i think it's the best overview for you to get a taste of what you're going to experience in this study and it's called could the wilderness be god's will which i think okay honestly i think all of us who have ever been through a wilderness or watched somebody go through a wilderness mm -hmm. experience have said really god is that really what you intended to have happen here maybe just address that from your heart right well it started with my own personal journey through a wilderness that started with more of an emotional and a spiritual wilderness than ended up in a physical wilderness for me where I was literally laid out flat. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you wrestle with God during those times. And the, and the chapter before is, is it okay to ask God the why questions in the wilderness? And I want to let people know it is okay to wrestle with God. It is okay to ask questions, but then you need to come to this point where you say, okay, I'm here. God might have placed me here. How can I redeem this time? How can I make the best use of my time while I'm in the wilderness? And so that's when I really started studying the scriptures and saying, you know what? God took some amazing people through the wilderness. I mean, he took the Israelites, he took Elijah, and he even took his own son. So I started thinking about that and praying about it. Like if God sent his very own son, Jesus, who is perfect and obedient into a wilderness. Yeah. Who am I to think that he's not going to use a wilderness in my life and that it isn't to punish me or to torment me or to, to um, leave me there <laughs> to fend for myself. It could be for some really, really good reasons. And mm -hmm. I know that sometimes we don't see those reasons when we're there. Okay. And that's all right. But if we look to the scriptures and we look at these examples in the scriptures, we can maybe see, oh, maybe God's doing that for me. And so I chose Elijah and I chose the Israelites and I chose Jesus as examples of how God can A, take you to the wilderness, one, to restore and renew you. Two, he could take you through the wilderness to teach and to train you like he did with the Israelites. And three, he can take you into a wilderness like he did with Jesus to prepare, protect you. Hmm. So those are the three reasons that I saw in scripture. And that's what that chapter kind of breaks down. Um, and Elijah's wilderness is more about physical, right? He went into the wilderness running and hiding and um, scared and ready to give up. And when he collapsed in the wilderness, God didn't, say to him, you know, Elijah, I've done all these great things for you. I've done miracles for you. You know, can you just get, get your big boy pants on and get it together and start doing the prophet stuff that I told you? Instead, what did he do? He sent him an angel to provide him food and water and rest. And sometimes, sometimes God sends you to the wilderness physically because you physically need a time of rest and rejuvenation and restoration. With the Israelites, they rebelled, didn't they? But God said, I want you to make, my, want you to be my very own people. I want you to be set apart. But the only way I can do that is to literally set you apart in the wilderness and use that time to teach and train you. And then lastly, with Jesus, Jesus was sent into the wilderness for 40 days. And I didn't even get this until I reread the story right before he started his public ministry. 
How interesting is that? And what? He was tormented and tested by Satan. But Jesus, what did he do? He used God's word to, you know, prepare himself, to protect himself, to get ready to go out and face what he ultimately had to do, which was going to the cross. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's so beautiful. And uh, with these examples, it clearly comes. I mean, one of my one of my pet peeves is when somebody's in the wilderness and a well-meaning brother or sister in Christ says, you know, how many times do you have to go around this mountain or how long until you get your act together so you can get out of that wilderness? And okay, we are going to concede here that there are situations that God brings a consequence or allows a consequence in our lives to change our behavior, right? That he is saying, the reason you're having this trouble is because of your behavior. Change your behavior, have a different outcome. Okay, we all get that. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about different kind of a situation a wilderness experience is when actually you've been doing exactly what god told you Uh you. and you find yourself in this shocking Mm -hmm. confusing period of time Mm -hmm. where you pray you are doing everything you know to do and nothing about your circumstances is getting better right and this is what this book is about and it's really such a mm-hmm. good tool. For it's a way to hang on to hope and encouragement on yeah. those really dark days where you, like you said, you feel like your prayers are hitting the ceiling. You feel like no one understands you. You right. feel like people will say well-meaning I and mean, well-intentioned things, but like, things. or they're looking at you and saying, well, if you just had more faith, if you just prayed more, if you just did more, and that's not what a wilderness experience is about right. at all. And that God can redeem and will redeem Absolutely. You know, the wilderness is never his destination for any of us. If you look at all throughout scripture, and like you said, we may never ever get out of the wilderness till we see Jesus face to face in heaven. There are some wildernesses that will last our entire lifetimes, but m- many of them, God has a purpose and a plan. And there is a promised land we're to, to go to and we're, we're passing through. So he doesn't want us to waste and wither away in a wilderness. He has something to do. And in your examples, Elijah didn't really have a time frame set out, but Jesus and the Israelites actually did. No matter how obedient Jesus was in the wilderness or how obedient those Israelites were in the wilderness, there was a deadline. They were 40 yes. days for 40 years, and that was it. There was nothing they could do to speed that up. Yes. And I think for us, a lot of times we don't... Um, like when we get pregnant, we know that there's an end insight to that pregnancy. We have it nine months on the clock, you know, and we're, we're, when it's overdue, man, that's feeling bad. <laughs> right. And so I think with these other wildernesses that come in our lives where we don't know what the duration is, boy, we can get really frustrated and confused with God. On page um, 39 of your book, you have this beautiful It's actually pretty flammable, actually. It's really a beautiful page. It's called Three Ways to Redeem and Not Waste Your Wilderness. So let's go ahead and just talk those through um, today. And that's one of the ways we design this book as well with the principles and the graphics. I don't know if people can see that. These are for you to take out and to like post or put somewhere, put in a frame, hang on the refrigerator, put it in your car. I'm a very visual person and I need constant reminders. And um, so... When I talk about redeeming your wilderness, our tendency is to whine in the wilderness. And I've been there too. I've thrown a lot of pity parties. It's funny that no one RSVPs, but um, (laughs) you know, I threw a lot of pity parties in the wilderness and so did the Israelites. But instead of whining in the wilderness, God calls us to watch for him in the wilderness. Watch for the ways. Like if you would open your eyes, you would say, oh, there is a stream here. There is an oasis right around the corner. He does provide living water, even in the wilderness, if we watch for it. Second of all, the Israelites worry, right? They worry that, oh, we're not going to have enough food. And, oh, no, how are we going to travel? And the enemies are going to attack us. And they worried and worried. And God said, wait, wait for me. And every time they did, and Elijah did, he showed up. He showed up with provision and peace and all of the things that they needed. He never let them go without anything that they needed in the wilderness. Maybe not what they wanted, but what they needed. And that's what I found in my journey is that there were people that I expected to be there for me in the wilderness and they weren't. But instead of focusing on them, God brought other people and other things to me in the wilderness. But I had to wait on him for that and watch for him. 
And then lastly, our tendency sometimes in the wilderness when we get bitter and discouraged is to walk away from God, right? Mm -hmm. To say, you know what? This isn't working for me. This isn't what I signed up for, God. I've done everything you've told me to do. I've served you. I've been faithful. I've been a good yeah. wife. I've been a good mother. I've been a good friend and a good teacher, all these things. Mm -hmm. But that is the worst thing we could do in the wilderness. What he really wants us to do, he wants to strip us down so all we have is him. And let me tell you, the presence of God in the wilderness, you will never feel him more than when you turn to him in that deep, dark, lonely place. Because he's there. He is there for you. But you have to walk towards him. You have to cling to him. I have the sweetest times of feeling God's presence in those deepest, darkest valleys in the wilderness. Because he was there and no one else was. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And it's so sweet and so precious. Yeah. And there are times in the wilderness too that God is silent. And I remember a long, uh, many years ago, I went through, you know, they're called the dark souls of the night or whatever, you know, where yeah. you just have this silence and your prayers feel like they're hitting the ceiling. And right. this God who's been so active in your life and just, you know, doing all this stuff and showing up everywhere, all of a sudden seems to have disappeared. And I remember going through that and just being devastated and trying to figure out what I did wrong. Yes. And other people were like, you know, just move closer to God. He's moving closer to you, you know, great advice. Um, but it just wasn't working and I didn't know what to do. And um, one day I read in um, my utmost for his highest, mm -hmm. uh, he just said, he said, sometimes God brings a silence to test your faith. Are you trusting him because you really love him or are you trusting him for him showing up, for him doing stuff for you, for him always, you know, delighting you and thrilling you? Or do you just love him because he exists and because he first loved you? And it was really encouraging to me that that was actually uh, defined in that situation. It was actually defined as a trust that God was trusting me with yes. a little more of a difficult time than usual to see mm -hmm. how I do. And that season lasted very, you know, it didn't last very long. And then the presence of God came back into my emotional sensations and things like that. So I think for those of you who are listening, who are going through a wilderness and you don't know how to think about this and you don't know what right. to do. And you people are telling you, if you just get your act together, this will be mm -hmm. over soon. But you're like, I'm not, I have, I, I'm like, Job. I'm saying, I don't know that I actually did anything to bring this on. I, I really, right. you know, confessed everything I know, you know, I just encourage you to check out this book, The Way of the Wilderness. And, and Carla, what is the name of your website? It's www.carlagasser.com. Very so simple, easy. just my name. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find this over there. It is yes. not currently available on Amazon, so you do need to go to Carla's website yes. to find it, or you can find her over at womenspeakers.com as well. Yes. Carla, this has been so great. Um, do you have a favorite Bible verse that you'd like to share with us before we close? Yeah, the verse that God gave me that started this whole thing is in Isaiah, and I will just read it to you. There's a beautiful um, cut out, you know, graphic of it in the book, but um, it says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And that comes from Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. And that's how I, I started writing this book. And that's how God took me on the journey. And mm -hmm. the other thing that I want people to know when they come out of the wilderness is that now you have empathy and you have compassion yeah, and you have comfort that you can give to someone else that you would never have had before you went through your wilderness. So God can use it too mm -hmm. to bring him glory and to bless others. And that's what he's doing in my life. I think it is one of the most um, awesome realizations is that once you've come through something, you'll never be one of the people who yes. did to you what you had been doing to others, but you didn't even realize you were, you know, exactly. I, I can see, you know, through my own wilderness experiences, I'll, at some point I'll be like, Oh, that's yes. how that feels. I don't ever want to say or do that again to anybody, you know, and right. instead we have this firsthand experience of how it feels to be walking through that. And we can actually share God's compassion and grace with people right in the midst of their darkest times. So yeah. thank you for comfort him with the comfort book. he's given us. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. He has good to bring out of this, out of every last thing. Carla, thank you so much. Thank you. 
And thanks you guys for joining us. I hope you'll share this interview with your friends. Just share it on your own Facebook pages or, um, or just let people know about the book too, The Way of the Wilderness. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye.